Hey guys, welcome to Quinia's Budget Crafts. I was helping a friend with a horcrux, so now you gotta deal with necrosis fingers. Anyway, let's do some shrooms. The book says that it's a semicircle of mushrooms, but otherwise doesn't say how big that circle is, so I'll assume two inches. You could just cut one of these two inch hardboard discs that we made for the bases in half, but I think the super zen cardboard might work better here. As for the mushrooms themselves, just grab anything vaguely mushroom shaped. I've got some furniture tacks, some rivets of various sizes, and some sewing pins. Draw and cut out something kind of semicircle to put the mushrooms on. If you're using this cardboard, don't forget to take the shiny part off. You can just get the tip of your knife under there and peel it right off. I'm not worried about this thing having some flex to it because I'm gluing it down. But if you're going to leave yours as scatter, you might want a firmer base. Grab your mushroom shaped bits and kind of figure out where you want them. The book says that these are tiny, but if I used all sewing pins, you wouldn't be able to tell what this is. So maybe three of the furniture tacks. The other rivets don't look so great, so none of the big ones. And then a few of the small rivets I have look pretty good. Just put a little hot glue down and stick the tack on. You do want to have one leaning here and there as you put these in. And then start sticking in the next size mushroom thing you've got. Little pool of hot glue and stick it down. I'm doing small groups of about three around the stalks of the bigger ones. Just take your sewing pins and very carefully snip the top portion off at random lengths. And once you've got enough of those, repeat the process. Just a little glue and stick them down. I had to use tweezers here to help me reach in there. You have more time than you think though. The little ones fall over pretty easily when the glue is still fresh. Then just go through and fill any gaps with a little hot glue. This is going to be your dirt. When you're all done and it looks like you stole grandma's pincushion, grab some of this. This is an automotive primer, which is where you'll find it in Walmart or through my affiliate links on my page. And because it's made for cars, it will stick to metal really well. So just go outside and hose down everything. I hot glued the bottom of it to a dowel and then the dowel to my mat. If you're a better painter than I am, don't worry about the order. But for me, I had to do the paints in this order. First, antique white all of the stalks. You might need a smaller brush to reach in there and don't forget the underside of the big ones. Then, heavily water down some brown so that it'll flow well and get it on all the ground portions. You can just stick the dowel back into the little glue donut on the mat between paints. The book says that these are red, so grab your red of choice and paint all the tops. The little ones are kind of tricky and some of them are leaning on the others, so be careful here. This is still looking a little boring, so I put down some Mod Podge wherever I wanted a little bit of moss or grass and add some flocking. Then, to give these a wet look, take a little bit of Mod Podge gloss just straight out of the bottle and paint the tops of the mushrooms with it. You can be pretty sloppy here and let it drip if you want. This stuff is really good for making water effects. Once that dries, go out and hose down the whole thing with some matte clear coat to lock in all the paint and flock. And if you've already removed your glue donut, a dry erase sponge torn up by this critter works well to hold the dowel while the clear coat dries. And then you can just peel it off the bottom and you're good to go. If any of the little pins fall out, it'll be fine. Just toss it or you can stick it back in there. There you go, guys. A cheap, easy way to make a mushroom cluster. If you want to support the channel, you can jump on Patreon and get some exclusive access, or a one-shot donation over on Coffee. Of course, I have a webpage where I have affiliate links to all the stuff I like to use, where you can pick up some supplies at no extra cost to yourself. If you like this video, you might like one of the other ones on screen here. But as always, thank you for watching, everybody. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you on the next one.